Hello there, Libra, Sun, Moon, and Rising. Welcome back to Radiant Moon Tarot. My name is Victoria, and we are having a look at August 2024. Thank you for your money and your career energies. Let's get right into it and see what we've got coming up for you guys. Just a word to the wise. We do have, right at the very beginning of August, we've got Mercury retrograde. Mercury, as we speak right now, is in shadow, preparing to go retrograde. So it's uh, a time of reflection, refocus, renewal, um, reassessing, reevaluating things, right? Mercury retrograde always reminds us to take care with uh, communication, reread your email three times before you hit send. Um, and if you are making important decisions or signing documents at any time, let's face it, we can't always put life on hold because of what a planet is doing. And this is just a reminder to not be impulsive, to make sure that you ask questions, write a list uh, if you can't, uh, you know, if you can't necessarily put your thoughts in order, write a list is always a good place to, to go. But we also do have August 4th, we've got a new moon in the sign of Leo. Wonderful, wonderful energy here for manifestation. Leo energy encourages us to boldly follow our dreams. So there could be something that you've been dreaming about, especially if it's anything creative or maybe anything entrepreneurial. Leo energy is great for that. Leo energy also does bring in leadership. So taking charge, taking the lead, being courageous, bold and brave. Um, so it's a good time to, you know, maybe Go for that promotion that you've always wanted. It's a good time to get out of your comfort zone, see how you can maybe make a little bit more money. Um, but again, a little bit of caution with that Mercury retrograde. The 19th of the month, we've got a full moon in Aquarius. Look back at the beginning of February to the new moon in Aquarius. What were you manifesting at that time? What were you, what new beginnings did you have at that time? And this is again a reflective energy. Look back to see how far you've come. You've probably made more progress than you give yourself credit for. Um, because it lit that Aquarian full moon, it is a full moon. So it's a culmination of a cycle. Yay. Um, and, uh, it says something could be coming to fruition for you, but we could also get the unexpected because the modern day ruler of Aquarius is Uranus and Uranus is the great awakener, brings us um, a little bit of rebellious energy, stick it to the man, you know, that kind of Aquarian energy. Um, but it ultimately brings us freedom, liberates us from something that is preventing us from, you know, reaching our future goals or making change for the future. Expect the unexpected when we do have Uranus at play because it is very unpredictable energy. We're going to start out your reading with the Fool card here. So, wow, we like the Fool card, full of fun and adventure and possibly new beginnings. We've got Anonymous here for you as well. I'm going to pull all your cards and we'll go into them. We've got the Six of Cups. We're also going to pull in some Money Manifestation cards as well at the end of your reading. The Seven of Pentacles is here. Empress card right in the middle, right in the heart of your reading, Libra. We love that. Uh, ruled by Venus. Venus is your ruler, so this is awesome. We've got the Nine of Wands. Not as awesome, so take care of yourself, but that's okay. We've got the Eight of Cups. Hermit. And we've got the Devil in Reverse. Okay, so if we're going to get the Devil card, we want that bad boy in reverse. And we've got at the back of the deck the Eight of Swords, but this Eight of Swords is reversed also. So the Eight of Swords reversed is freedom, is letting go of restrictions, freeing your mind, freeing your body, freeing your energy. Uh, this is excellent for you. So there is some sense of letting go, some sense of uh, maybe even rebelling <laughs> against, you know, again, rebel against the forces, right? But there is this overlying sense of freedom around your readings. This is really good energy. Right in the middle of your reading, right in the heart of it, we do have the Empress, okay, ruled by Venus. Venus is your chart ruler. And so this is awesome. The Empress card can be a time of harvest for you. This can be where you find resources, you open the doors to opportunity, and you can get what you want, right? So, Oh, it's uh, very awesome. So something could be coming to fruition for you. And especially this is hitting right around the mid midpoint leading us to the end of the month. So it certainly could be something going on. 
somewhere in the vicinity of that full moon in Aquarius. This can be really fun. The Empress card does bring us resources, though, resources that we need. It can bring us opportunities, new beginning, um, and our opportunity to create something for ourselves. So it really is an awesome energy all around. Uh, Venus rules the Empress card. Venus also rules Taurus, uh, which is money energy, and we've had a lot of... Um, a lot of stuff going on in the sign of Taurus and Uranus has been there as well earlier in July. So this can be something where something is coming about because of the conjunction that we had with Uranus and Taurus uh, you know, just in the midpoint of July there. So this can be something coming to fruition for you. But the Empress card is really awesome energy there for you to find what you need get what you want or tap into your creative side and start something new. We do have the nine of wands right beside it though with the seven of pentacles. So this is really encouraging you to slow down, slow down and smell the roses, slow down and take things one day at a time, um, slow down and take care of your own energy, have a little bit of R and R and, you know, especially if you've been working really hard, we all do need a little bit of a break every once in a while, right? And we are coming into very shortly here your astrological new year. So you could be really kind of in a little bit of a reflective mode uh, right now. Or maybe you're just feeling like things have been going wonderfully for you. And you're just, you know, in August, you're like, I'm going to spend my money on me, right? The Empress can be about self-love, self-care, doing the things that you want, um, this can be where you uh, throw a little bit of caution to the wind. Maybe you're like, I've been babying my finances for so long. I'm going to have a little bit of fun with my money. And that's not a bad place to be because money is a circulatory energy. We do have to spend some money on the things that bring us happiness and joy so that it flows back to us in that positive way. So you could be doing something nice for yourself, especially since we do have the Fool card there. And this, it can be about a journey, an adventure, maybe with some friends, Six of Cups with some old friends, perhaps um, as well. So take care of your own needs. That Nine of Wands does show the need for some R&R. &R. Also shows that you are maybe contemplating Seven of Pentacles over here. How do I get to, you know, my finish line, right? Where am I at right now? Because the Seven of Pentacles can be a card of assessment. It's also um, can be one of strategy, right? Is my financial plan working out for me? Is my financial strategy working out for me? Um, you know, I'm at the Seven of Pentacles, but I really want the Ten. Am I still on the right path to achieve that financial freedom? Or do I need to switch things up a notch? And with the Empress card right there, this does bode very well for whatever decision that you happen to make in any strategy that you do put in place, right? And again, watch your energy, but the Nine of Wands could be that powering at home, right, to get something done. But we do have the Fool card over here, and the Fool card is right at the beginning of your month, new beginnings, a fresh energy, a fresh start, a pep in your step, adventures, uh, maybe adventures with friends. The Fool does bring this energy of, you know, taking a leap of faith or just taking a lighthearted approach to things. And this may be where, where you're feeling a little bit of a release of pressure um, in your month of August. We've had some challenging energies. Uh, we've had some really good energies in the last couple of months. We've had some really challenging ones too, um, especially the latter part of July. So this can be where you're like, you know what? I'm just going to be in the flow. I'm going to go out. I'm going to enjoy myself. I'm going to try new things. I'm going to look for something new, but I'm not going to put all my eggs in one basket. So it's like you're keeping an open mind with this energy. But again, there is this energy of release, of letting go, and maybe even of taking your power back for some of you. You're healing a situation and you're getting yourself in a better state of mind and a better perspective um, on things here. So this can be just, you know, where you maybe you've been ha having to pinch your pennies, pen pinch your pennies, excuse me, for the last little while. And now you're just like, oh, okay, I'm glad that's over. Now I can get back on track. And so this can be a really good thing for you. You could also be changing 
your patterns and habits around money, especially with the devil card in reverse there. We're releasing something there, something that's had control over us. We are now releasing and we're doing things a little bit better. We're healing a situation, especially with the hermit right beside that devil in reverse. But with the Fool Anonymous uh, and the Six of Cups, okay, there's a little bit of a mystery that may unfold for you guys in the next month. Something new, okay, or something fun or something fantastic that, you know, you have the power to create or you have the power to do. You can find the resources that you need. But we do have anonymous energy coming in here. And whenever I get this card, um, you know, this is one of those decks with a few extra cards, right? So it's kind of like, you know, assign your own meaning. And the anonymous card to me here is a mystery, a mystery person, a mystery opportunity, uh, something a little bit unexpected, something a little bit unknown. Now, you could have some mysterious energies helping you in the background behind the scenes, but I also do feel like someone may help you or, or present you with an offer or an opportunity. And the anonymous energy can certainly indicate that you don't know who this person is. You've never met them before. They're not in your world right now. They're not in your life right now, but they may see something in you or you may meet someone out of the blue and they could offer you some opportunity because the six of cups that's here. Okay. While yes, it can represent nostalgia. Yes, it can represent reflecting upon the past in order to, you know, figure out where you want to go in the future, what you need to do for the future, which is important. It does also represent a sweet gesture or a gift or something there. And it may be someone from the past, but with the anonymous energy right there, it could just be someone unknown to you, right? So maybe just someone uh, gives you some good advice or maybe you bump into somebody, right? While you're on some sort of adventure, you get to talking and the next thing you know, your energies click and that could lead you into some really good opportunities. But yes, anonymous energy can also represent your energy. Something in secret. So are you reviving an old dream? The Six of Cups can be where you're looking at, you're kind of reflecting on the past and it can be a return card. Return of people, return of um, opportunities, right? Returning to somewhere as well. So you could be revisiting something or giving something a second chance. But the anonymous energy suggests that maybe you're doing something behind the scenes and you're not necessarily shouting something out to the world. And especially with the fool card there, because it can represent something new, right? Needing to make a bold move, take that jump, right? Go for it. Um, this can be where you might have that new job opportunity opening up for you. You could be putting your resume out there, um, you know, or you find a wonderful investment opportunity, but you are not telling anyone about any of it, right? You're like, I need to just keep this to myself. Not only do I not want someone to take my opportunity away, right? But also, you know, especially if you're looking at changing careers or changing jobs, um, you know, announcing it to your current workplace typically isn't the way we want to conduct ourselves. It doesn't usually end well. All right. So you could just be doing something secret. So a little bit of a mystery there. We do have the Eight of Cups here as well, though, and this is a transitional card. The Eight of Cups can certainly show that you're on a journey, you're moving forward, you're making the right moves here. And, you know, with the Eight of Cups, it's like, Okay, I'm leaving one situation, I'm making progress, right? But I'm kind of in between. Because the next card after the Eight of Cups is the Nine of Cups, which is wish fulfillment, getting what you want, right? Achieving something here. But we are with the Seven of Pentacles here, so you're slowing things down, you're contemplating something. And so the Eight of Cups can be where you're like, okay, either I'm on the right track and I just need to keep moving forward. I'm not quite where I need to be at the moment, but I know that I'm going to get there, right? Or the Eight of Cups is knowing that your best foot forward is to venture into the unknown and to leave something behind in your present circumstance. And because we do have the fool there, right? 
The fool can certainly represent sometimes a naive energy, right? We do need to ask questions. So again, beginning of the month, Mercury retrograde, ask questions. Okay. But you know, with the fool, it's almost like you're making a decision to step into a different or new situation or do something a little bit differently. We don't always have new jobs and things like that. Um, opening up for us, right? But, you know, both the Seven of Pentacles and the Eight of Cups here, they're walking up to the Fool, which does represent something new is required. Whether it's a new way of thinking, new way of communicating, a new way of dealing with people, um, you know, uh, approaching your money, your resources, your career path in a different way, or yes, going and stepping out and finding the new, because we do have a healing energy here as well. So if something's a little bit off kilter, it's not impossible to fix it, right? So fix your money, fix, you know, your spending habits, that kind of thing. Maybe even repair a icky situation in your workplace. If you have a toxic boss, they could be leaving and you could be getting a new boss. And it's like, you don't know who it is, anonymous, but six of cups, it can actually be a gift. It can be someone who is actually really cool, really, really awesome to work with. Um, you know, so we've got a couple, a few different things going on, either fix it, walk it away, or again, so you could have someone new coming in. But the hermit card here is Virgo energy. And uh, the ruler of Virgo energy is Mercury. And so this retrograde can really have you thinking about things, thinking about your future, enjoying the present moment, six of cups and the fool, right? But we are also a little bit reflective and we are contemplative and we're looking out into the great beyond and saying, where do I want to go, right? This eight of cups energy, where do I see my future taking me? What do I want to do? Seven of pentacles. So again, very, um, very reflective in this, right? And remember, the Six of Cups always reminds us, number one, to enjoy our present day, to have some fun, to feed into our inner child, to enjoy the moment. But it does also remind us that the past is past, it's done and gone, and our past energies, our past situations affect where we are today. And in the moment of today, in the energy of today, we can embrace our today to make a better tomorrow. But it's important to live for the here and the now because that's the active energy. Future is forever in motion. The past is done and gone. It's today that is important. So if you've been procrastinating, procrastinate no more, right? Um, if you've been wondering where your path lies, how do I make more money? How do I find that a career that's more fulfilling for me? How do I improve my financial situation? The hermit card here is slowing you down, but it is also lighting and guiding your way. Um, and it is also bringing in a healing element to your situation there as well. So uh, I feel like if you have some questions or if you've got some uncertainties, grounding your energy, taking that step back is going to help you figure out what your next moves are and what the answers are for you. Um, the hermit card is, of course, Virgo, and right uh, right after that uh, Aquarian full moon on the 19th, we are heading into Virgo season, and this can be a little bit of a calmer energy, yay, <laughs> right? Um, and so this can be where you do uh, get some healing. Uh, this can be where you may actually have um, uh, a job change. Um the hermit card, even though it's card number nine, hermit, uh, hermit energy, the Virgo energy, Virgo itself exactly is related back to the sixth house in astrology. It's a Virgo house. It's a Mercury. It's ruled by Mercury. And, you know, the thing is here, the sixth house has to do with our daily life, our health, happiness, our well being, our daily habits, patterns, behaviors, the things that we do every day, which includes your job, right? And so in this, can I fix my job? Can I fix myself here? Am I going to be happy here or do I need to let something go? Right. And so there is this healing element or there is this one where you're being guided to move forward. But yes, we do have the bad boy of the bunch. We've got the devil card here, which is Capricorn energy ruled by Saturn. And the interesting thing is that, um, uh, Saturn has been retrograde. So this can be where, you know, taking things a little bit slower, uh, especially Mercury retrograde as well, 
um, thinking about things a little bit deeper, looking at the big, big, big picture of things would help you make the changes, especially in your career uh, and your money sector that you want to make. Now, the devil card in reverse can be where we do really focus on hermit making better choices with our money, with our investments, right? Um, this is where it's like, okay, I'm going to make myself a budget. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to really kind of, you know, um, take charge of my situation. You're going to take your power back. Okay. In wherever you have been feeling powerless, the devil card in reverse is, you know, something has had control over you and you're releasing the shackles. Remember, we've got the eight of swords at the back of the deck as well. And this can be where, you know, maybe a toxic person or an, a, you know, an ornery boss might leave your company or you leave and the situation that you get into next is way better than where you are right now. But I do feel like there is this release of something um, and could be related back to the Capricorn full moons that we've just had, right? As I as I do this reading today, it is actually on full moon day. Uh, I don't always do readings on full moons, but this one felt good. So um, here I am. Um, but the Capricorn full moon, especially this one from today, July 21st, is the blue moon and your attic degree now or never um, very much releasing something and moving forward. And this can be that aftermath, that effect for you, right? So feeling that sense of um, freedom and maybe a little bit more positive vibes and certainty for the future. But I'm loving the Empress card right in the middle of your reading. Beautiful energy here. Doors opening for you. Uh, very creative, very abundant. Um, and, you know, so just take your time one day at a time. Keep an open mind. Keep an open heart. And uh, I think some things are coming to fruition for you. We've got training. These are the money manifestation cards. So we're going to look at the symbols, right? Because we want to look for matching symbols. We're also going to look at the messages as well. So we've got training, financial freedom with a crown. That's the crown jewel of the deck, by the way. We've got conditioning with a padlock. Very interesting since we do have the devil card showing up. We've got laziness with a padlock. Okay, two padlocks. and uh, Dream home with the money in a jar. And we have another uh, stars in a jar and we've got entrepreneur. So very interesting because I think we may have mentioned a little bit earlier that some of you may have a little bit of an entrepreneurial spirit or if you've got like some creative endeavors or something like that, you can do those on the side while not giving up your day job. So the entrepreneur energy stars in a jar. Um, you know, what do you want to create? Where do you see yourself going? What is your vision? Because, you know, some of you could have the opportunity here to be your own boss in some way make a little bit of extra cash as an entrepreneur you'll have you will truly have an opportunity to discover yourself and all of your potential we do have dream home some of you could be purchasing your dream home we do have movement in your reading okay um so and especially the eight of cups it's like i want to move but i don't know what that looks like at the moment or i don't know what's available for me um but i'm ready to make a move right and it can be your home, it can be your job, it can be whatever it happens to be onwards and upwards though, right? So dream home, some of you could have that opportunity opening up for you. And this can also represent that if you've been longing for something, okay, maybe you've been feeling kind of stuck. Um, we can't all afford our dream home, right? Um, and this is really about remembering that your home is home is where the heart is. And you can make pretty much any home a beautiful space. And you do have that uh, Empress card right in the middle of your reading. Venus brings beauty. And so the dream home reminds you that when you live your best life, your dream home is actually where you live right now. So you can declutter, you can paint, you can put flowers, uh, you can bring plants inside, rearrange your furniture. You can make anything warm and cozy um, if you put your mind to it while you work on perhaps saving up for your actual dream home. But yes, some of you could have a dream home coming in there for you or the opportunity to make that move and to buy that. Now we do have the two padlocks here, conditioning and laziness. Okay, so conditioning, 
Um, this is quite often our habits, patterns, and behaviors or belief systems. Fortunately, we've got the devil in reverse, and this is releasing all of that. Our, our belief systems around money or our belief systems about our earning potential, those things, they, you know, they don't always work for us as we get older and as we, you know, as situations and circumstances change globally. So whatever you've been conditioned to believe, this is a time where things are changing for you and you have the ability to grab the bull by the horns and make some positive changes, break the lock, break the cycle. We do also have laziness showing up here. Isn't that awesome? Um, this can, you know, just be that little bit of a kick in the pants that you need something you want, something you desire, and are you taking action to reach your goals and your dreams, or are you being a little bit of an armchair astronaut and just sitting sitting back and hoping that something just materializes for you, right? Remember, the universe we will arrange people, places, situations, and things for you along your journey for abundance, prosperity, manifestation, but it's up to you to take action. It's up to you to take that leap of faith, the fool card. It's up to you to, um, you know, grab the bull by the horns, right? It's up to you to make those bold moves. And good thing we're in Leo season right now because it is making bold moves towards your dreams. We do have training here. So for some of you, you may feel that your key to financial freedom and success there is uh, to go back to school or seek out some advice. All right. This just says that you may have some new skills to acquire or there might be some information that you need before um, before a, a door really does show uh, itself to you um, and before you can make those moves. So if that's you, you'll know it. But we do have the crown jewel here with financial freedom. And, uh, you know, this is reminding you that part of your path to financial freedom is to examine your belief systems around money. Remember, money is energy. Right. And it manifests in our material world. And when we think of money as energy, what is energy? Infinitely abundant. And when we embrace that, then it's amazing how many doors and portals open up for us. It's amazing how many blessings and resources come your way. All right. So remember that. OK, don't let yourself be limited or defined by money. It's just energy. Don't believe that it's only the one percent of the population that get to experience this abundance because it's simply not true. It's what we're conditioned to believe. All right. So there's some great things going on for you guys here. Um, but uh, I thank you for watching and leave that there. I hope there was something here for you. If so please like, share, subscribe. I hope you have a fantastic month ahead. Enjoy yourselves. Have some fun. And um, I'll see you guys later. Bye.